Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install Windows 11 using one of these, a USB drive. This video works great if you're doing a fresh build, it's a brand new computer that you've done, or if you're just doing a reinstall of Windows 11, stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So right off the bat, I just wanna let you know this video is going to be a little bit lengthy, so stay with me. I'm gonna to try to make this uh, as user-friendly for somebody that's never done this before, step-by-step, step, as detailed as possible. So if you have done this before, uh, feel free to use the timestamps and the chapters to skip around and jump where you need to. If you've never done this before, hang with me. There's a lot of information we're gonna cover in this video. The first things that we're gonna need in order to get started are you're gonna to want to have a machine that supports what they call TPM or Trusted Platform Module 2.0. If your machine doesn't support that, you can. Uh, the rest of this is just history and I'll show you how to see if your computer supports that here in just a moment. The next thing that we're going to need is an eight gigabyte or larger USB flash drive. Um, any files that are on this drive, you will want to move somewhere else because during the preparation process, it's gonna remove anything on it. So make sure you have that data safe. Now, if this is a brand new build, there's a few different options that you can do. You're gonna to want to have a purchase copy of Windows. Uh, so you could have either a access to a different machine so you can create the media creation tool and the install files, which again, we'll cover here in just a moment. Or if you don't have that, you can actually purchase a copy of Windows from like Amazon or Best Buy or something along those lines, which will typically come with the activation code um, and go from there. If you're just reinstalling this on a current machine, we're gonna run the media creation tool. That's gonna to go through, detect the settings that you need. You will need to have either signed in with a Microsoft account to activate it on the new machine, or if your hardware is not changing and you're just installing a fresh copy, chances are you won't have to activate it at all because they attach that activation key to the hardware of the machine. So that being said, we will cover how to activate the windows later on in this video as well. The next thing that we're gonna need is an internet connection. Uh, Windows 11 is pretty good about installing the drivers, but it's a good idea to get your manual ready just in case you need to reference it for the BIOS, but also in case you need to download your wireless driver or your ethernet driver in case Windows 11 doesn't pick it up once you've installed that on the new build or the new machine or the new install, you can then uh, pick up the rest of the drivers if that makes sense. So that being said, let me show you how to check to see if your computer will support TPM 2.0. You can do the Windows key plus the letter R and that's going to bring up the run command which looks something like this. You're then gonna type in tpm.msc and hit OK. And it's gonna load uh, a trusted platform which is what TPM stands for, trusted platform um, window here and you're gonna want to come on down to where it says the TPM manufacturer information. Your manufacturer might be different but you're specifically looking for the specification version 2.0. If it shows the 2.0 on here, you're good to go. You can proceed with the rest of this video. If not, you're gonna want to enable it in the BIOS and to do that, it's a good thing to have your manual on hand so you can go in and find out how to enable it. But essentially, you're gonna load up your BIOS head into the boot and security and look for the option that says enable TPM or TPM or trusted platform module somewhere along those lines. Again, refer to your manual just because there's so many different manufacturers out there. I cannot cover them in this video, but you're gonna want to go in and enable that setup. Once you've done that, hit F10, it should save, it should reboot the machine and then come back into this section right here where it shows the specification and just again, verify that it shows the 2.0. So to start and prepare the USB drive, we're gonna download what they call the media creation tool. This is just an assistant that installs the installation files on the USB drive. So open up your browser of choice, head on over to this website right here. Link for it will be down in the video description. Um, and then once you've done that, come on down to the second download now option uh, if you want to, you can check before you begin. It's a good idea to make sure you have enough RAM or your CPU. Things meet the standard requirements. If you install Windows 11 on an older machine, chances are it may not run smoothly and may be pretty slow. So uh, once you've done that, click on the download now. It's going to download the media creation tool. And once it's finished downloading, we can run it directly from here. Um, you will need to have admin uh, access on the machine if you don't in order to do that. So. We're gonna close the browser and you should see a window that looks something like this. Um, go through the license terms if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on accept. Then it's gonna get a few things ready. 
Uh, this is the part where you're going to want to get your USB drive ready as well. Uh, you can select the language in addition. If you don't want to use the recommended options, uncheck it and select the addition in the language. Chances are you can select a language, but the addition will be whatever it is. So I'm going to choose use the recommended and click next. Choose which media to use. I'm going to use a flash drive of at least eight gigabytes. We are not going to cover the ISO. So select the top option, click next. If you haven't already done so, you will want to plug in your USB drive at this time. You may need to click on the refresh drive list in order for it to show. Mine's the EOS digital. I'm going to click on that and select on next. Before you click on next, remember anything on that drive is going to be erased. So make sure that those files are safe and sound if you want to keep them somewhere. It's going to start downloading Windows 11. Depending on your internet speed will de determine how long this process is going to take. Once everything is finished up, it'll say your flash drive is ready and it's time to use it on the next machine. So if once you've finished up with that USB drive, you've done the media creation tool, you're going to want to take that USB drive and plug it into the computer that you're going to be um, setting up. So in this case, we're running an Asus machine, so we're gonna be hitting the F8 key or spamming the F8 key in order to bring up the boot menu, which is our preferred way to get into the USB drive. So I'm gonna spam the F8 key. Other manufacturers might be different. It's a good idea to um, have your manual handy just in case you need it or maybe even a Google search. So we're going to go ahead and hit F8 key. And there we go. You can see this is our boot menu right here. You're going to want to select your USB drive. So you're going to want to kind of have an idea of what your USB drive was. So let's go through this list here and just kind of take a look. So it's going to be my, my Transcend TS3A partition 125 gigs. Once you have selected your drive or you have found your drive, you're gonna to want to try to choose a UEFI. It's just the newer technology when it comes to installing Windows partitions. So you're gonna to want to select on that, hit enter, and it's gonna start the Windows installation process. Once you've selected the USB drive, it should take you to something like this. In this case, we're actually gonna show you the alternate method just in case you cannot get your boot, your boot menu key to work. We're gonna go ahead and exit this setup. The machine should reboot one more time. In this case, you're gonna to want to hit your delete key or spam your delete key in order to get into your BIOS. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sit here and spam that until we get into the Asus BIOS. Typically, the delete key to get into BIOS is pretty universal for most manufacturers. Again, check your manual in case yours isn't working, but let's see if we can get this to work. Perfect, okay, so we're in BIOS. Again, yours might look a little bit different because the BIOS utility is different, but depending on your manufacturer, what we're gonna do with Asus here is you're gonna want to hit F7 to get into the advanced mode. Again, yours might be a little bit different. Once you've done that, we're gonna scroll on over to the boot option right here. And you can see just below that, we have different boot priorities. We've got boot option one, two, three, and four. You're gonna to want to select your boot option number one and set it to whatever USB drive is yours, yours as name. So in case, so just for reference, mine was the SD Transcend TS3A. We would want to set it to that. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit F10 in order to save. So if we were to hit that, it says, or so we were to hit this, go down, hit enter. That's going to select the Transcend or my USB drive to be the boot one. And then you're gonna hit F10 and save those settings and let the machine reboot. Once you've done that, on the screen you should have an option that says press any key to set up and continue. You'll want to pay attention, but you can just spam any key and that should load you into the setup like you saw just a minute ago. So if you've booted everything and you've done everything correctly, you've either booted from the BIOS screen where you've selected your boot priority or you were able to boot the USB from the USB drive, you should see this next step. Now we are continuing this on a virtual machine, but it's essentially the exact same thing as a physical desktop. This just makes the screen capture and the recording a little bit cleaner. So um, everything that you should see on my VM, you should exactly see on your computer as well. Uh, there might be some slight differences uh, depending on the version of Windows that the media creation tool created or whatever. So you're gonna want to go through these next steps. So you're gonna leave everything as is, unless you need to change things. Um, I'm just gonna go through all of the defaults. So we're gonna hit next on all of these types of formats. We're gonna click on install now. <clears throat> it should say setup, setup is starting. Um, if you do have a product key, you're more than welcome to type that in now. If you don't and you're looking at getting one later, again, you can just click on I don't have a product key because Windows 11 is free to download, but it is not free um, as far as like activation because you'll be limited on things that you can customize on the computer. So we're gonna click on I don't have a product key and you're gonna choose 
the version, if you do have a product key, you're going to choose the version of your operating system, whether it's Home Edition, Pro Edition, Education. Not everybody is going to have this. I have access to all of these. And so it's given me that list because when I ran that media creation tool, it detected that I was able to choose one of these versions. Yours most likely may not have an option. If it does, just download or choose the one that matches your product key. It should be in your documentation as to which one you have. So in this case, I'm gonna choose Windows 11 Pro since I have a key for a Windows 11 Pro. I'm gonna click on next. Of course, if you wanna read through all this, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to choose accept and then click on next. And if you want to do an upgrade to install and keep your files and settings, you're more than welcome to, but this video is designed for a clean install. So we're not gonna be covering this. If you wanna figure out how to do that, you'll have to find a different video. We don't have one of those yet. So we're going to do a custom install windows only for advanced. Um, your drive may have multiple drives or your this next step may show multiple drives. You're gonna to want to determine which drive it is that you're going to install Windows on. This is very important because Windows is going to typically install or uh, create different partitions for system recovery. Obviously it's gonna have some partitions for your main C drive. So the one thing that I like to do with this step is to unplug any other drive that I'm not going to be wanting to accidentally install Windows onto. And that way it cleans up this list and you're only shown the drive that you're wanting to install. If for any reason you don't see any of your drives in here, go into your BIOS again, verify that you can see your drives in there. If not, you may want to check your cables, make sure they're nice and snug like the power and the SATA cable. Uh, if it's an M2 drive or an NVMe drive, you're gonna want to make sure that's seated and correct. Um, sometimes putting that drive, if you're still not seeing it, into the top of your boot priority in your BIOS will get them to show up in here. If you're having any issues, of course, reach out down in the comments with the error code that you're getting and I'll be more than happy to try to help you out. But from here, we're gonna be installing to the unallocated space. If you do have other uh, partitions in here and you know you have data on there, you're gonna wanna save that data somewhere else if you want to keep it. If you don't wanna keep it, you don't really care, then you can just select that and then delete that partition. Once you delete the partition, that data is gone this is your warning. Do not do it unless you know for a fact that you have all of that data or you don't care about that data on that specific partition. I cannot stress this enough. Once it's gone, it's gone. So once you've selected and you've discovered which drive it is that you're wanting to put Windows on, you can actually just click on the one that says unallocated space because Windows will create all of the necessary partitions that it needs to. With this being a VM, I just have the one because that's the one drive I'm gonna be using. So we're going to select that. Sorry, this was a long winded, but there's some very important stuff when it comes to the partition. So again, I'm gonna select the unallocated space and I'm gonna choose on next. Once you've clicked on next, that's it. It's going to start installing Windows. Um, we're just gonna let it go through this process and of course use the power of editing to speed this up and then we'll come back once it's finished. One thing to note with this process is this can take, uh, just depending on the speed of your computer and the hardware of your computer, it can take five minutes like you're seeing here, or it could take closer to an hour. It just depends on all the specs of your computer. Once the download or the install, I should say, has finished, it's going to restart in 15 seconds, or you can click the restart now. Now, quick pro tip, if you're getting a boot loop after you've installed Windows 11 and it keeps trying to get back to the installation, shut down the machine, remove the USB drive from the computer, turn it back on, and that should solve the USB or the boot loop issue. Once it's finished, it's gonna reboot, and then it's gonna start saying getting ready. Like I said, this is a virtual machine, so you won't see your Hyper-V, you might see a Windows logo, you may even see your board manufacturer logo. Things will be slightly different here, but overall it's the exact same process. Then it should say just a moment, it's getting a few things ready in the background, and it should take you to a very familiar, if you've done Windows 10, it's very similar, just kind of with a facelift, and you're gonna again proceed through these steps. So we're gonna do the United States, obviously you'll want to select what region or country you are. We're gonna click on yes here, Choose your keyboard layout and input method. Again, choose it what's appropriate for you. I'm gonna click yes. I don't want to add a second keyboard layout. If you do, click on add layout. It'll have you select another layout. Checking for updates. If there's any other updates, this is the time it's gonna do that. 
Um, if you've done the media creation tool, typically you're going to download the most recent version. There might be some small security patches that will eventually it will pick up, maybe some driver updates that it might pick up, things like that. But overall, it's going to make sure that you have the latest Windows 11 version. It is normal for your PC to restart probably a few different times during this process as well. And right here, you can start naming your device. Let's just do, we'll just do YouTube test. You can skip it for now if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and do YouTube test. We'll hit next. Oh, I've got a space in there. You cannot have spaces or anything like that. We'll hit next. Just a moment. Once again, it might reboot. It might do a few other things. How would you like to set up this device? I've, we're going to choose the setup for personal use. We're not going to cover how to set up for work or school. So personal use, hit next. You can sign in with a Microsoft account. If you have a, pro a product or a license key attached to that, you're more than welcome to sign into that. If the hardware hasn't changed, chances are it's going to activate itself. Even if it's Windows 10, they're trying to push people to Windows 11 anyway, so there's a chance that it may work. Um, you can do different sign-in options. I don't want to use a Microsoft account. I prefer local accounts and then activating it myself. So I'm actually going to choose the option that says sign-in options, and then I'm actually going to select an offline account. Again, yours might be different. I'm going to go ahead. It's just saying, why not a Microsoft account, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to click on skip for now. And then we're going to choose an account name. So again, YouTube, we'll just do YouTube. Hit next. If you want to enter a password, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to worry about it since this is a test account. We'll hit next again. Just like on Windows 10, if you've done that, you've got all of these privacy toggle switches. I toggle every single one of them off. They don't need any more data than what I want them to see. Hit accept. You can read through individually on each one of those if you want to customize, obviously, your install. And that should be the last of that setup. So we're going to say getting things ready for you. This may take some time, to, again, depending on the specs of your computer. And then we're going to go ahead and sign in, and you've got your Windows 11 installed. So at this point, it might be a little sluggish in the background. It's going to start installing drivers. Hopefully, you've got your Ethernet driver or your wireless driver. Uh, if you don't have internet connection, it might have a hard time. It's not going to be able to find those drivers. So hopefully, you're able to dive... So hopefully you're able to download those drivers beforehand, Put maybe put them on the USB, bring them over to the new machine and install them. That way you have internet connection. The main th reason I say just those ones is because once you have your network driver installed, it should be able to install the rest of the drivers that you need, unless you have like a specific graphics card or something along those lines, you may need to visit AMD's or Nvidia's website or whatever driver you need. Again, you'll want to refer to your manufacturer and do all of that research kind of on your own. But essentially, that's how you install Windows 11. Now, if you're still getting a activation, uh, Windows 11 is not activated or something down here in the corner, you're going to want to manually activate your Windows. To do that, you can click on the Windows, and you can just type in the word activate and go to your activation settings. Once you've selected that, you'll have this uh, Windows option here, or this uh, settings option. And you can see that mine says activation state is active you're going to want to click on where it says change product key or maybe add product key, something along those lines. And from here, you can type in that product key, go through these prompts, and activate your Windows. Again, yours will only activate if you have the correct key for the correct version. So you're going to want to do a little bit of research beforehand and just make sure that you have the right product key for the right version of Windows. So that's Again, all there is to it. Hopefully by now you're able to install Windows 11 and start getting that set up. If you're still having some issues or you're not sure what to do next, please reach out down in the comments below. I'll try to answer those as soon as I can. If you guys can, try to explain the issue that you're having, maybe error codes that you're getting, maybe blue screens, black screens. Just give me an idea of what's going on so I can help you guys kind of troubleshoot and diagnose what's going on as well. That being said, thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you guys were able to get your Windows 11 installed. If you were, give the video a thumbs up. Also, while you're down there, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Those three things certainly help us grow our channel, and we appreciate what you guys do. Don't forget to head on over to shop.helpcloud.com. We've got some cool merch that you guys can check out over there as well. That's going to wrap it up for this one. We will see you on the next one. Peace.